final method that children might use when adding and subtracting is the column method. So it's important that they understand what I've written at the bottom here in order to be able to do this accurately. So children need to know that 10 ones, that's this column here, the smallest one, is equal to 110. So we can change 10 ones for 110. And the same goes for our tens. So this second column here, if we have 10 tens, we can exchange that for 100 because we cannot have two digits in that one column. So let's have a look at column addition first. So if we start with four plus eight, we know that would be 12. Now the number 12, we have two digits, so we cannot just put 12 in this part of the box here. So we have two ones in that number, so that would go in our ones column here. And the 10 that is in this number 12 here would be carrying over, and we'll put it down here, under the tens column, because we have one ten and two ones. So once we've done that, we can then have a look at the tens column. We have five plus one is six, and it's important that the children don't forget if there are any numbers at the bottom as well. We need to add another one, and that would give us seven. Lastly, we can move on to our hundreds. So for this one, we have one plus zero, so that would give us one. So it's important with both the addition and subtraction, we always start from the ones column first. Now, the subtraction on this side. We start by doing the two minus one, so that gives us one. Then we have a look, six minus seven. Now we cannot do six minus seven, so what we're going to do is we are going to borrow or we're going to exchange from the hundreds column. So we have a 100 here, and we know down the bottom here that 100 is equal to 10 tens. So what I can do is I can cross this one out, and instead of having 100s, I'm going to put a 10 here to show that I've got 10 tens. So I've got now I've got 16 here, take away the seven, which I can do. So that will give me nine. And then just double check in the hundreds column, there's nothing minus nothing, so we have a zero.